Hey folks, Keith here at Chicken Thigh Fishing. Does your trolling motor feel like it's bogged down a little bit? Let's take a look at it. Stick around. Hey guys, Keith here. We got a short video today talking about when you get junk jammed up in your trolling motor. And how you usually know that is your trolling motor isn't going as fast as it normally does, or it's not going at all, or something just feels funny. Now the first few times I experienced this, I really didn't understand because I'd never done it before. And then I realized it's a really simple process to fix. Now, I was out last night fishing on a pond that was a high level of weeds. And by the end of the night, my trolling motor felt like it was bogged down a little bit. So today, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to address that. And I'm going to remove the trolling motor prop and I'm going to clean it out. Now, I know what I'm going to find in there. You may not. What happens is through this crack a lot of times weeds grass and or fishing line gets in there and wraps around the spindle of your trolling motor and that's what slows it down or in fact can even stop it so we're gonna take a look so I'm not sure if this is the same for all brands of trolling motors but I'm pretty sure it's a universal setup I've only owned Minn Kota, so this is for Minn Kota trolling motors you have a washer and a nut that holds the prop on to the motor. In this case, it's a, a black one with a T-handle on it, which makes it nice and easy for uh, removal. Or you may just have a regular hex nut on there holding it on. So let's take it off, see what we find. This is the T-nut, and there is a uh, washer there. You pop it off, here's your prop, and there is your problem. I knew I had some grass on there because I could feel it. Sometimes you'll have a whole ton of it there, or even uh, a whole bunch of uh, fishing line. Last week, I swear I had a hundred yards of fishing line on here. On your trolling motor, you also have this drive pin, which goes through the spindle. So I take that off. Sometimes this stuff can be tough to get off because it's wound there so tight. So I usually just use pliers and pull it off. And sometimes I need to use a razor knife on uh, some strong weeds or on fishing line to get it off there because it can be on there super super tight fixed easy fix unbelievable so all you do is put the pin back in now this pin is a little rusty and these pins do rust and they do end up breaking sometimes they get so brittle that you can break them by hand so while I'm under the hood I'm going to replace this. I always have a supply of them on hand because they do break. And you're out on the water and that breaks, you have no trolling motor. You can fix this in two minutes and you can fix it on the water as long as you have a replacement pin. You don't have a replacement pin, your trolling day is done. So in my waterproof utility box that I always keep on board, I keep a supply of pins, nuts, and washers to replace this should the need arise. So I got a brand new pin. 
going to stick the pin in. It's got to be equidistant on both sides in order to fit and marry into this on the prop. So you just kind of line it up by eye. And as long as it pushes on and seats properly on the housing, you know that that pin is in that slot. Put the washer back on. Put the nut back on. Cinch it down a little bit. You don't have to go crazy. But certainly don't want it coming off. And you're done. Now, let me tell you a little bit of a funny story because you know I like to have a little self-deprecating humor and I like to share mistakes that I make with you so you don't make the same mistakes. When I had my first trolling motor, it was a transom mount trolling motor that I had on the back of the original chicken thigh, which is a uh, 12 foot aluminum boat. I'm out on a pond one day, I'm fishing. All of a sudden I go to turn the trolling motor on, don't work. It's going nowhere. The, I look down, the uh, prop is not turning. I'm like, no way. My trolling motor broke. Are you kidding me? Now I'm killing the fish. I'm having an epic day fishing. I'm like, unbelievable. My trolling motor broke. And it really wasn't that old. I got frustrated. I got mad. I went into shore. I took my trolling motor. I took it off the boat. And I heaved it into the woods. I was so mad. I left my boat on the shore. Got in my car. Drove down to Dick's Sporting Goods, bought myself a brand new trolling motor. It cost me like $260. I figured, well, I might as well upgrade to a 55. I had a 45, so I got a 55, a Minn Kota. I drive back to the pond, I put the trolling motor on, and I fish. And I have a great day, and I go home $260 lighter in my wallet. Well, after I started thinking about it, I drove back to the pond the next day, went into the woods, picked up my trolling motor that I heaved into the woods in a fit of rage, and like a genius, I decided to take a look at it. And I removed the prop, and when I did, the pin came off. There was only half of it left. The drive pin was gone. That's why the prop wasn't moving. The motor was working and the spindle was spinning. The prop wasn't moving, so I thought the whole motor was broken. Now that will go to show you that I am not on a short list to be considered to be an astronaut. I am definitely not the sharpest knife in the drawer. So I looked in and I said, you have got to be kidding me. This little piece of metal that probably cost 19 cents and I went and spent $260 and got a new motor. So you live and learn. I learned that there's a pin in there, a drive pin, and that sometimes it breaks. I ended up, I think, giving the old motor to my uh, nephew BJ and I had a new one and it was a uh, learning experience. Uh, sometimes I get ahead of myself and get a little mad without thinking things through. But now that I think about it, there's another little tip I have for you regarding that pin and I wanna show you. Now when you are out on the water especially if you fish at night like I do very very often you hit stuff you hit logs you hit stumps you hit rocks I mean I've hit stuff I've hit stuff while you know while my motor is on five you know and when you do that you can bend the pin when you bend the pin the trolling motor doesn't work properly the prop doesn't spin properly sometimes it'll go doo -doo 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 -doo. it'll jump around depending on how bad you bent it other times it won't work at all this happened to me when I was down on Lake Chickamauga in um, Tennessee. I hit something. I'd never been on the lake before. And uh, I totally bent it. And what happened was I couldn't get it out. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I couldn't get this out. I even had, uh, you know, I have a couple, several pairs of needle nose pliers on board at all times. I, it was bent at an angle that I could not pull it out. Now, eventually I worked it out, but I'm telling you, it took me a good 20 minutes to get that pin out. So I came up with a solution. And now, just for that specific circumstance, what I keep on board is a nail punch and a itty bitty hammer. So if I have an experience like that where the 
the drive pin on the spindle of my trolling motor is bent such that I can't push it out by hand or I can't pull it out with a pair of pliers, I have a nail punch that I can stick on the end of it and a small hammer that doesn't take up much space in my boat. I keep it in one of my utility boxes and I can bang that pin through and replace it and put the new pin on. So, may sound stupid, but I'll tell you what, if these two little things can save you a half hour of heartache and headache when you're out on the water, it's worth having them on your boat. So anyway, that's our quick look at a trolling motor today and how to keep it free of debris inside and a little bit of knowledge on the pin so you don't throw a trolling motor in the woods. We'll see you next time, folks. And until then, stay fishing, my friends.